Hey out there, it's Wake Angel 2001 coming to you again live by, um, camera, whatever. Uh, okay. A thing has happened over the last week. Uh, they announced the creation of a new Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon. It's gonna be on Cartoon Network next fall, and it's under the tentative title Super Sonic. Not Super Sonic, it's under the tentative title Sonic Boom. Of course, this means that everybody who knows me has been sending me messages about it. So I figured the only way to get these messages to stop is to actually make something like this so that everybody knows that I know about it. Alright, so. You probably want to know my opinion about this cartoon, right? Um, the details that they've given us are sparse, but they said that it's going to be comedy-centric. It's going to focus on characters from the video game. Uh, it's, and there's going to be 52 11 minute long episodes. Um, if I were to compare it to cartoons that are out now, it will, since it's a CGI cartoon, it would be kind of like the Ninja Turtles or Beware the Batman. Uh, but with the 11 minute episodes and the comedy tone, it would be kind of like Teen Titans Go. Or to give something that has a bit more universal appeal, maybe something more like Adventure Time. Eh, everyone likes that. Okay, so what are my opinions about this? Well, first of all, I want this to be perfectly clear. I loved Sonic Sat AM, the Saturday morning cartoon from 1993. It was one of my favorite cartoons of all time, and I think it actually is one of the best cartoons of that era, if not of all time itself. I hold it up in regards with the original Batman the Animated Series, Gargoyles, um, you know, other, other shows like that. Just really good shows. It's good. It's really... I digress. My point is that con that cartoon cannot be recreated today. You won't, be, you won't make another Sad AM. It just won't happen. Why? When Sad AM was created, almost nothing was known about Sonic. What was Sonic like? Who were his friends? What was his world like? Those details had not yet been fleshed out because there had only been a couple of games. We didn't know any of it. So the creators were free to do whatever they wanted. And, you know, since it was the early 90s and dystopias were all the rage, they made that whole uh, guerrilla war fighting and, you know, it, it, it was a great cartoon, you know. It, it take, its design cues would be more similar to shows like uh, like Star Wars or other... other um, dystopian sci-fi futurism shows like like uh, SWAT Cats. Remember SWAT Cats? That was awesome. Similar in uh, design elements and tone somewhat. But I, again, that's because we didn't know what Sonic was and we're free to make new stuff. Now, it's been 20 years. We know Sonic. Yeah, actually, it's been 22 years. By the time the cartoon comes out, it'll have been 23 years. We know about Sonic's world. We know what Sonic's like. We know who he's friends with. We know what his enemies are like. We know what the world he lives in is like. You can't, you can't make a divergence from that without hugely clashing with what people know. Or what people think they know. Now, I love the comic book. I read the comic book. I've collected it for two decades. I, um, it ca the comic book series today carries on the legacy of that old Sad AM cartoon. And it has been going on and has been successful. It's successful, it's objectively good in my opinion, and that was an oxymoron sentence I just realized, and um, I know it has a big fan base of its own. However, it is not, by any stretch of the imagination, the first thing that the general public overall thinks about when they think of Sonic. The first thing they're going to think about is the video games. Um, if you if you ask kids what the, what the show's going to what they think about of Sonic besides the video games, they might bring up uh, the Sonic X anime, because that's still in reruns. It's been, on, it's been in reruns since 2003, which makes it the most successful Sonic cartoon to date. Um, in, and I work in Toys R Us. Sometimes I get kids who know about the older Sonic cartoons, but it's about the adventures of Sonic, or maybe Sonic Underground, because they don't really sell the old Sad AM DVDs in stores nowadays. You, mean, you can find some episode compilations that have a couple of episodes from Sad AM Adventures and Underground, but you won't find the Sad AM set anymore, in my, in my Toys R Us at least. I, I personally got it from Amazon. 
So kids, the the kids today don't know. Yeah, they they don't know from sad AM. If you present them a cart a Sonic cartoon that that takes place in a dark dystopia with a bunch of other characters, they're gonna be like, "Who's that?" and why is this so different? You know, they're, they're, they're not going to... It's not going to be successful. Oh, speaking of kids, that's another point of contention. I've heard a lot of people complaining about the show's target audience of 6 to 11-year-olds. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, yeah. We, we're making a cartoon about, about uh, anthropomorphic animals having adventures. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's make... Let's make this to a let's make this for a 21 year old audience. You know, to, to, you know what do you expect? Sonic is a mascot franchise. He has always targeted to kids. Making the making the show target six to 11 year olds is perfectly logical. And just because the target is six to 11 year olds does not mean that it's gonna be like um like uh like Jake and the Neverland Pirates or. Or Octonauts, or or one of those other shows that's outright toddler fodder. You know, like it's a show that shows that targeted a six to eleven year old audience included shows like Adventure Time and My Little Pony: Friendship Is Magic. Their target audience are young kids, but the audience that they got turned out to be much broader, including people of my demographic and even older, because the shows were just good. The same is true for Ninja Turtles. I mean, sure, there's um, it's based on a, on a property from the 1980s, but do you really think that the teenage that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show on Nickelodeon was created with a target audience of college graduates in mind? No, it was made for kids. Cartoons in America, at least, are made for kids, unless it's intent. If a cartoon is intentionally made for adults and it airs in a prime time slot, uh, you have a show like um, you have shows in. Actually, I think some of the shows specifically aim for adults are some of the lower quality crap. Stuff like uh, Super Jail, um, Aqua Teen, whatever show. Literally, I think it's what it's called by now. Squid Billies. The art and animation quality of those shows is not good. And they seem to get by on cathartic ultraviolence and just... Um, yeah, it's made for a mature audience, but... Ma mature audience apparently like crude humor and ultraviolence. It's it's actually quite pathetic. A show that's a sh I'd, I'd rather a show try for a broad appeal than trying to go for an adult audience because adult audience shows aren't good. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. I love Family Guy. I love Simpsons, but you know those are going for mainstream appeal. They aren't going for adult audiences. They're going for a wide audience. But you know, that that's because they're allowed to, because they're primetime shows. Again, this is going to be Saturday morning cartoon fair. 6 to 11 is the age demographic you'll expect. Okay, so, I talked about the cartoon, that I know about its existence, that I... Oh, by the way, I'm looking forward to it, I'm hope, and I'm thinking that it's going to be pretty good. I think it'll be good. I'm hoping it'll be good. I want it to be good. I want to like it. I probably will like it. I'm definitely going to watch it. Okay, so all that's out there. So I guess all that's left really is to talk about that one teaser screen cap that they've given us. Because uh, that in itself has spurred a lot of controversy. So I'm going to stop the live recording here and go on to that screen cap and we'll talk about that over voiceover. Okay, let's do that. Alright, so here's that teaser image they uploaded. Um, well, that does look like a level from a Sonic game, you know, it got nice palm trees, blue skies, it's very nicely computer rendered. I mean, if they use the same kinds of um, uh, animation that they use to make the cutscenes for the Sonic games, like in Colors or Unleashed, then it'll look fine as a TV show, because those cutscenes all look great. Uh, now, we see the characters, but only their cast shadows. Um, Tails and Amy look almost identical, uh, although y it's hard to tell because her hands are on her hips, but it looks like Amy's not wearing her iconic hoop dress, and I don't think I see the bumps of her knee-high boots, so she might be wearing a different outfit. Uh, Tails looks pretty much the same, except if you look on the left, between his tails and his shoulder, there's a bump there, indicating he might be wearing some kind of jacket. Uh, Sonic, um... 
His silhouette looks a little bit different than we're used to. I believe he's wearing a big vest. It almost makes me think of Marty McFly because it, it kind of really alters the shape of his silhouette. Also, his spines look a little bit shaggier than they do in any of the games. I'm not sure why they did that because that never was a priority, like, ever. Um, except maybe if you count the Fleetway Supersonic, his spines got a little shaggy. Of course, everybody has been focusing their attention on what looks like Knuckles there. Um, I mean, if you look at his hands, you can see a sharp thing jutting out from the back of his palm that can only be Knuckles' knuck claw. But um, he has fingers, and uh, oh yeah, he seems to be Storm the Albatross. I mean, really, he's a head taller, he has huge shoulders and arms, like, what the heck? Um, I'm not sure that this isn't... This even is Knuckles. If it wasn't for the bumps on the back of his hands, I don't think anybody would suspect him of being Knuckles. I mean, the tail is the right shape, and I guess it looks like a dreadlock hanging over his shoulder, but come on, the, the proportions are completely off. I mean, they said specifically that they were trying to stay true to the uh, Sonic design, so why would they depart from Knuckles', uh, transfer Knuckles normal form so much? I mean... I remember back in 1998 when they changed Sonic's design for the Dreamcast and they and people blew up Japan? And I'm pretty sure people went on hunger strikes when the Ninja Turtles came out with three toes. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm being largely facetious. Um, I mean, this isn't any real reason to get upset about because this, this is just a cast shadow. For all we know, it could be the trick of the light. Or maybe it'll be like Teen Titans Go where the characters can change their appearances... Um, to suit an episode, like when Robin got really jacked in that one time, remember? Yeah, well, whatever. Um, note one last thing, look in the right, that's a loop-de-loop. -loop. Cool! Okay, you got me back. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about Storm the Echidna here, but, uh, I don't know, we're gonna have to see more teaser images, or maybe a full trailer. Um, I, I'm still thinking it should be good, because I heard who's making this show and I really don't think that they would completely screw everything up so yeah let's uh let's see what they do alright this is Wake Angel 2001 signing off